Hi there, welcome back. Today I'm going to continue on the Free Code Camp's uh, Responsive Web Design Certificate and we're on Learn Accessibility by Building a Quiz. Um, we're on step 21 now, so let's dive in. So step 21, here's what we've got so far with our student info, HTML and CSS, for example. Um, so step 21, keep in mind best practices for form inputs. Give each input an appropriate type and name attribute and then give the first input a placeholder attribute. So all of these inputs, and what I'm doing is clicking and holding control or, uh, sorry, option or the alt key, I believe for Windows. Um, and we want to give it a type and then also a name like so. And then the first one, and if I just give it like this placeholder, and that will just be a string. Uh, let's do double quotes. And we'll just do placeholder like so. So you can see we've got our placeholder here. Um, and the, the type of these, if I select all of these again, um, I believe is called, um, I'm gonna have to remember this now, but the, the input type, um, Actually, that's a good point. Let me come back to that. But for name, what we can do is equal, and then we kind of want to take the uh, the label from above, and I think that will then um, sort of tie that in. So just so that we can target it as we collect the data. So basically, the name of birthday date will equal to this input. Um, and I just need to go on MDM to remember inputs types, uh, just the different types of inputs that you can have. So uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So type text, for example. Um, so these would all be text because what we're inputting um, is going to be sort of see, strings. So let's see. Let's check that and see if it passes. No. Ah, okay. So the second one, because it's email, of course, we need to give it an email and maybe date of birth will be type number, but let's see. Yeah, that's right. So it's going to be type date. And when we get to it, then you can see that changes. And now we've got a the, sort of the browser default date selector. So sorry. So the type is the input type, how you want it to display, um, not what it's sort of what I guess we'll be going in, um, but hopefully that makes sense. And if we check our code, there we go. We can see it passes now. Cool. So let's submit and go to the next challenge. So step 22, even though we've added a placeholder to the first input element, there's actually not a best practice for accessibility. Too often the users um, confuse the placeholder text with an actual input value because um, they think it's already inputted basically. So remove the placeholder text which we can do here and um, we want to rely on the label instead and there we go so sometimes obviously in my designs or sort of designs that i've um sort of made through work we do use placeholders it depends on um yeah i guess sort of you know, let's say your designers or UI UX people, um, but it's something good to note that placeholder might not actually be um, better for the end user. And you should always use a label um, and sort of sync that up to the input here. So also we can argue, or they're arguing that date of birth, DOB, is not descriptive enough. So this is also true, especially true for visually impaired users. So one way to get around this issue without having to add visible text to the label is to add a screen reader um, piece of text, or sorry, some text that only the screen reader can read. Um, so here, if I do SR only, and we want to uh, add a span element um, uh, with a class to the current text of the content. So I think we want to, let's just say add that here. Oops, and forward slash span. And if I go to the opening, we go screen reader only, and we 
want to, oh, sorry, we want to give this a class of, sc of screen reader only. And to the current content of the third label element. Um, so it looks like we actually want to wrap the label around like so. And what we're I assume going to do is create this class um, and it will be sort of visually hidden on the page. Um, ah, yeah, okay. So actually we want it just around the text here, FDB, date of birth. So I can just move these around and that should pass now. Nope. After the text content, DOB. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. And then I can fix it all up. Okay, interesting. And let's just have a look what's going on here. So label, after the label, date of birth is our span screen reader only, after the text content. Hmm. So why isn't that passing? Sometimes it can be sort of silly spacing. So I'm just gonna try and remove all of that. And maybe because it's not got anything in it, it can be a self-closing tag. There we go. So it might have been sort of spacing there, um, but that's how we can do it. So we just add a span within the label just after date of birth and the class is SR-only to signify that we want to set it only for screen readers. Cool, so I'll just close that for now. So within the span element, add the text date of birth in brackets. So as we know, this is currently appending or like showing on the page, but what we're going to do with CSS, and here we are, um, is make sure that the text is not visible to a, a sort of a, a user, um, but screen readers, for example, will still be able to go over that text and read it out. Um, so let's create our class here and just paste in those values. And then we can check that and we can see here the date of birth written out in brackets has gone. Um, but the screen reader would still be able to go through that because it's still in the HTML itself. It's just been hidden with CSS. So step 26 within the second section element adds two divs within a, uh, with a class of question block. So uh, let's do that like so. And we want to do class equals question dash block. And we want two of these. Oops. And within one of them, we want to add a P element with the text of incrementing numbers starting at one. Um, so let's try that one. And within the second one, uh, and field set here, I believe, with a class of question. And within each of them, sorry, so what we actually want is that, for example. And then we want to take this P and put that there, and that will be two, I guess. And I just need to get rid of this extra bracket. And let's check that code. And there we go. So we've got our first field set and our second one. So step 27, each field set will contain a true slash false question. Um, within each field set, nest one legend element and one UL element with two options. So here we want a legend element and then a UL. And within that, we want two LIs. 
um, or two options, and we're going to use list items like so. Oops. And I'm just going to copy that down there and do the same for this one. And I think that's right in terms of having the legend outside of the UL. Let's just see that passes. So there we go. We've got our legend for each of them. Um, and then a UL with two LIs, nothing in between there. So step 28, give each field set an adequate name attribute, then give both unordered lists a class of answers list. So for the field sets, um, let's give them names here. So I'm just going to select both of those and go name equals, uh, let's go question dash one for the first one. And I just need to change that one to question two. Um, so then we want to give both unordered lists a class of answers lists. So that would be the ULs. So I'm going to select both of those, type in class equals answer list. And then finally, use the legend to caption the content of the field set by placing a true or false question as the text content. So let's do here and just, uh, I'm just going to just type that for now. Um, you can see we've got two options, but nothing inside them. So let's check. Um, oh, and we just need this to be uh, different. So I'm just going to do true or false or false or true. And let's try that again. There we go. So that all passes. So finally, for this video, step 29, to provide the functionality of the true slash false questions, we need a set of inputs which do not allow both to be selected at the same time. So, yeah, we within each list element nest one label element and then within each label element nest one input element with the appropriate type. So within here, I'm just going to open these up um, and select all of them at once. So I can do it sort of four times using the option key. Um, this is on Mac and I believe it's alt key on Windows. So I am click, sorry, holding and clicking and holding alt and clicking. And there we go, we've got our four cursors selected now. Um, so just to go over, we want a label, label like so. And within there, and within the label, so I assume that's inside, we want our input element. I'm gonna give it a type, text, um, and close it off. And I'm not sure actually if that type is correct. Let's have a look. I don't think that will pass yet. So we want to give it the yeah, input radio buttons, um, of course, because they are only one can be selected out of the two. So that would be a radio button. And there you go. So you can see if I select one now, and then if I go to select the second one, it will jump to the second. Um, oh, actually, no. So they are not hooked up yet. Um, but I think once we've hooked it up, you'll only be able to select one at a time. So let's submit and go to the next one. So cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's all for this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.